Hello, my name is Courtney and I would like to welcome you to my channel. I am a wife, a dog mom of two, and a soon-to-be mom of a little baby girl coming in December of 2020. Here on this channel, we'll be focusing on vlogs, day in the lives, um, some potential product reviews for mom and baby. If any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to turn that notification bell on so you get notified when another video goes live. So a little bit about my husband and I. We have been together for about five or six years now. We got married last year in May of 2019. And we had been trying to have a little one for about three months. And in February, end of February, beginning of March is when I found out I was pregnant. Um, how I found out I was pregnant was a little interesting. Um, I woke up and I had really, really sore breasts. And they have been sore, like to the point where I... I couldn't wear a bra, but I needed to wear a bra, and it was just, it hurt to wear one, hurt not to wear one. It just all around was just so painful. And so I started looking up things that might be related to breast cancer. I started thinking maybe um, that could be a thing. I don't know. <laughs> I know it's also a sign of pregnancy, but I wanted to be safe. Um, I did take a pregnancy test. It was an expired test, but I took it, and it came back negative. I did go get two more pregnancy tests that weren't expired and I waited because I had these symptoms about five days before my missed period. So I went in the morning of, I want to say the third morning before my missed period is when I actually took the test because they say when you take it in the morning your hormo hormones will be a little bit higher and I honestly I couldn't wait any longer to take it <laughs> and I was I was expecting it to come back negative and thinking I had like a serious problem on hand um, but luckily when I took the test in the morning it came back positive and I was able to share the news with my husband who was working in his office at the time All right, so this is gonna be about my first trimester and what I experienced, everyone's experience is going to be different, so please keep that in mind. Every pregnancy is also very different. Um, so as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I had to figure out who my doctor was um, and trying to figure that out was a little interesting. My husband is military, we are a military family and I had never been to the doctor since we got married and so I didn't know who my doctor was. So I had to call to figure that out. A lot of phone tag, a lot of just calling around, a lot of referrals. It took, it took a minute to find my, uh, find my doctor. Um, so I called them and I made the appointment. Um, during that time, my nausea hit full force <laughs> at about six or seven weeks. Um, before that, I was super hungry and just had really tender breasts. So once the nausea hit, I didn't want any food whatsoever. Nothing sounded good. Um, and then I would get like little cravings here or there for something. And my husband's like, well, let's go get it because you're not really eating anything. So let's go, let's go get what you're craving. So that was mostly burgers and baked potatoes. Um, and that's kind of what I was eating for a bit. Just kind of whatever craving popped up is what we went with. I ate, um, I was really craving Cheez-Its one day. I ate an entire box of Cheez-Its in one sitting. Don't judge me, they were delicious, okay? I hadn't had Cheez-Its in forever. They were so good. <laughs> they were exactly what I wanted. Um, so as I'm experiencing these symptoms and everything, I have my appointment at 10 weeks. So I ended up going to the appointment. Unfortunately, my husband couldn't go with me because COVID pandemic, they only allow the pregnant person to come into the building with a mask on. So as I get there, they ask you a bunch of questions, questions you would have never thought anyone would ask you. Um, they were just kind of weird questions in my opinion, but understandable because they want to know the situation and what they're also getting into. 
Um, they take your blood pressure, they take your height, your weight, and then they also draw like six vials of blood. They took like three large vials of blood and three small vials of blood. And <laughs> I asked them if they were gonna leave me any blood left. Um, she giggled and kept going, so. <laughs> I mean, I'm still standing, so I'm guessing they left enough blood. Um, I also had my 10 week ultrasound and it was not an eternal ultrasound. It was the exterior ultrasound. I was really worried about that and I, I kept looking it up because I was like 10 weeks blah, blah, blah. and there's like mixed reviews. I think it just depends on your doctor, but my doctor did external ultrasound. Um, I believe the baby's heart rate was in the 170s, um, if I'm remembering correctly, and super wiggly, <laughs> super, super wiggly. It was really cute to see. So at the ultrasound, it was kind of confusing. So they go by your missed period. So they go by for your baby's due date. Um, so they're originally saying December 8th of 2020. However, when they did the ultrasound, she said my baby was showing about six days ahead of that. So she was ranging more around December 1st, December 2nd of 2020. However, because I'm in some gray area, she said that she couldn't change the baby's due date in the system. So evidently, if I had come in like, I came in at exactly 10 weeks, if I had come in at like nine weeks and one day, and I was still measuring that, she said she would have been able to change it. But because um, I was exactly 10 weeks, uh, I couldn't do that. Or maybe it was 10 weeks and one day, she could have changed it. I don't really remember something like that. <laughs> but I don't know, something was really weird about it. I still don't understand it. So I say I'm due December 2nd, but in the doctor's logs and everything, I'm due December 8th. So they're going on my weeks based off that. They also do like a physical. So they check to make sure you don't have any lump in, lumps in your breasts. And they also do a pap smear. However, if you had had a pap smear in the past three years and they could get that information, they didn't have to do one of those. However, they did still need to check to see if your cervix was closed. So that wasn't the most enjoyable experience. <laughs> But it was over really quick. I don't know if every doctor does this, but they sent me home with a booklet of medications that I could take, that I couldn't take, things to avoid. It's just like a little rundown information booklet that was super helpful. Um, my doctor did say that they usually have like labor classes that you go to, but with COVID and the pandemic, they aren't doing those. So I haven't read any parenting books. I haven't seen any birth classes. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I figure um, I figure it'll be okay because I feel like if you get too many opinions coming in then I'm just gonna overthink everything and it's going to give me more anxiety so I'm just gonna wing it and look things up as I go and it's either gonna bite me or really really help me so we'll see. <laughs> But yeah, that was uh, my experience throughout the first trimester. Just a lot of nausea. Um, the nausea didn't really subside until about 14 weeks. So once I was into my second trimester. All right guys, now I'm gonna get into the second trimester, which is where I am currently at. I am 26 weeks as of Wednesday. Wednesday, 26 weeks as a Wednesday, and um, things are going okay. Clothes are starting to not fit for sure. <laughs> it's definitely a struggle to get dressed. Um, food aversions, I still, um, the smell of fruit coffee drives me insane. The smell of chicken is a little bit better. I still don't really crave chicken unless it's like um, slathered in buffalo sauce which gives me heartburn now. So <laughs> I tend to not eat that anyway because my heartburn has kicked in and it is full force. Um, it's almost like every time I eat, I get heartburn. So that's always fun. Um, craving still burgers, um, French fries instead of baked potatoes, but still burgers. And Firehouse Subs is still like pretty number one on my uh, cravings list. <laughs> and Taco Bell occasionally. So am I being the healthiest? Probably not, but my cravings are so strong and I don't think anything can prepare you for how strong cravings are. 
Um, when the second trimester hit, so did the cravings for sweets. So I have been wanting anything and everything with sugar in it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to be really good with that. I'm trying not to go overboard with the sugar. I've kind of pulled back a bit, but I do still have one or two sweets a day just because I'm craving sugar. <laughs> That's all baby girl wants. Um, so I also have been experiencing headaches. Um, I was prone to headaches before I was pregnant, so I figured headaches were just gonna be a staple for me. They haven't been as bad as I thought they were, but I'm also someone who isn't taking any medication during this time. Um, so if I do get a headache, they tell you you can take Tylenol, I believe it is, but that does absolutely nothing for me. It never has, I don't think it ever will. So I'm not even bothering. I use a bit of peppermint oil, I'll take a hot shower, I'll put a cold cloth on my head, um, anything and everything, try and get rid of it um, besides medication. Uh, I've had a lot of round ligament pain, which is the ligaments kind of like underbelly. Um, I've had them mostly on the right side. Baby girl seems to sit more on the right side, so that seems to be more where my pain is at. If I'm walking too long, I'll get it. Um, so I just try and monitor that, make sure I'm not going too crazy, too hard with that. Uh, my foot pain's been unreal. <laughs> so I'm trying to do stuff for that. I'm still in the midst of figuring that out and how to help with that. I used to do ballet years ago. I did it professionally until I was 22. I think I was 22, 22 or 23. No, not 23, 22. And um, so I don't know if that's causing like because of just the wear and tear on my body from years and years of ballet. I don't know if that is causing extra pain or not, but it's there. <laughs> so um, hip pain at night has been unreal. I just got a pregnancy pillow. I'll let you guys know if that's truly helping. I slept with it last night and I seem to have slept better last night than the past couple of nights. So that was kind of helpful. I think it's working so far, but again, jury's still out on that one. Um, some nights I'm just like wide awake and I can't sleep, but I think that's because I took a weird nap during the day, but oh, I've been so tired. <laughs> Especially at 24 weeks, I've, uh, I've kind of hit the wall. I'm getting closer to my third trimester and I'm getting so tired. So that's just, that's just another thing. 20 week ultrasound, the anatomy scan. So my husband did, did, he did get to go with me to the anatomy scan, so that was really sweet. Um, he got to see baby girl, he got to see her heartbeat. Um, <laughs> he could have sworn it was a boy, I thought it was a boy. And um, luckily we had three names picked out for a boy and three names picked out for a girl, just in case. And um, baby's heart rate was in the 140s. She was in the 96th per, per what are words? She was in the 96th percentile um, for her like gestational growth. So she's on the bigger side. But again, that could be because my gray area of like when I do and stuff. I'm not really sure. Um, but she was already a pound at the 20 week ultrasound. So she's probably gonna be a big baby. Also at the ultrasound, um, they like I'm trying to remember it was I went in just for the ultrasound so they had messed up the appointment a little bit and they had to kind of like reschedule but still fit me in the next day so I got the ultrasound and then the appointment that you're supposed to have after the ultrasound actually ended up for me being the next day and it ended up being a virtual appointment um so that was kind of weird but it was nice because I didn't have to get ready to go to the doctor <laughs> at like 10 o'clock in the morning nine o'clock in the morning um so that was kind of nice it wasn't too bad um I did talk with the doctor a bit about my breast pain because I was still having breast pain. Not nearly as bad, but my breasts have grown like three or four sizes. It's been ridiculous. <laughs> so it's been crazy. Um, I've also had a little bit of like leakage out of them. Um, she said when I first told her about it, she said it was too early to really be getting that. But then when I looked it up on Google, they said it was normal, so she recommended I wear a sports bra um, morning and night, basically, just a tighter sports bra, and that seems to have helped. I think I still have a little here and there, but I just can't tell because I'm wearing a bra all the time now, so. Everything's been going good second trimester. I'm not nauseous anymore, which is amazing. It's just the heartburn. The heartburn is <laughs> starting to kill me, and the, uh, the clothes not fitting is you know, taking taking a real hit to the 
hit to the heart. I'm trying not to buy like maternity clothes, so we'll see, we'll see. I got these leggings that I'm currently wearing off of uh, Amazon and they're like, they fit. The jeans, the maternity jeans I bought before summer that fit me like before summer and I was able to wear, I can't even get on now. So <laughs> I can't even pull them up, <laughs> which is kind of depressing, just a little bit. So yeah, that's my second trimester. Honestly, nothing too crazy with second trimester. Like I said, just getting really tired. Um, but I am getting really close to my third trimester. Since I have started doing these videos, I am really excited because I'll be able to take you along with me for the 28 week appointment, which is going to be soon. Um, I have to drink that lovely sugary, I guess it's a sugary drink. Some people say it's gross. Some say it's delicious and they didn't mind it. So We'll see, since baby girl loves sugar, I'm hoping I find it delicious and not an issue, but it's for the uh, diabetic test that they do for you. Um, and I don't know what else they do with that appointment. I think I might have to get a shot, but I'll keep you guys posted and I will do like a, a vlog that day. So don't worry, we'll capture me drinking the interesting concoction of whatever it is I have to drink. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. You guys are amazing. Again, if you liked this video and you want to see more, go ahead and do that thumbs up for me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Ooh.